Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Today I am joined by David Hill, who started with IBM in 1985 and was with them until May 2005 when the IBM ThinkPad division was purchased by Lenovo. Since then, David has held several positions between those two companies, including the Executive Director of Design, the Vice President of Corporate Identity and Design, and the Chief Design Officer and Vice President of Experience Design. When it comes to ThinkPads, there are a few people that know more than he does. This is ThinkPad's uh, 30th anniversary this year, coming up at the beginning of October. And ThinkPad as a brand that's been around for 30 years, that's not an accident. That is something that you have to work very, very hard and very, very intentionally with uh, to make happen. And design is a huge part of that. You, you don't have a brand that uh, lasts that long with such a consistent design language uh, without a little bit of help. And I was wondering if you might be able to speak to why do you think uh, that was possible and maybe even some of the challenges that it faced over the years. Sure. So I've always been fascinated with designs, which I felt had a very strong connection or intertwining between design and brand, because I've always uh, sort of admired those kinds of things and, and found them to be at, at a, uh, like a higher level. Uh, you know, it's, a lot of people think a brand is just a, a logo and a name and, and you've got a brand. It's, it's far more complicated than that. You know, like uh, Jeep is a, is a great example. I mean, it's a brand name, but it's a, it's a design. I mean, okay, every once in a while they come up with Jeep that maybe I don't like quite so much, but the, but the, uh, the CJ series, if you will, which you know, I'd call Wrangler now, but but that thing is very much uh, a design and a brand. It's impossible to separate them. Or uh, Porsche and the and the 911. It's it's one of my favorites as to you know how they've evolved the design over the, over the years and how it still has a Porsche feel and and design DNA to it. So I was always enamored with that. And ThinkPad when it when I first started working uh, on the you know, design and managing. Uh, ThinkPad from a design perspective and user experience. It was kind of in its infancy. The, the brand had some meaning at the time. Uh, it was certainly, you know, it was a very high quality product, had a full color screen, an integrated pointing device. And, you know, it was made by that company called IBM. And it, it you know, it had a lot of uh, equity, definitely. But it took more time to really drive that relationship uh, and recognition of that relationship between the uh, design and the brand. And, you know, now it's like, uh, it's inseparable. You can't, you know, name it. There's very few laptop computers or actually anything of that kind of category that you could, that you could describe the, the design uh, of a brand. You know, I, you know, I don't know, what does an HP look like? I don't have the faintest idea. I, it has kind of a funny little HP on it, which uh, I, I don't know. That's just one that I like to pick on. But it, my, my point is that it took time. ThinkPad is a, is a design and it's a brand. And they are forever, in my opinion, intertwined and connected. You can't talk about one without the other. And it, it's taken decades, really, to do that. And the longer it goes on, the deeper that relationship gets. And I was, like I said, I was always fascinated by this and other brands. Uh, you know, when I was studying design in college, I was enamored with uh, people like Dieter Rams, who was leading the design of Brown, the German appliance and electronics company. And you know, everything they made had a, had a certain uh, Germanic ethos to it. And you, know, you knew immediately it was, came from the hand of Dieter Rams somehow. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I really admired that. But I also admired the uh, the work of uh, 
of others, like Italians. Their design always seemed to have a little bit more flair somehow. But, uh, you know, and there are examples of other companies like Olivetti, for instance, that mm. every Olivetti product was different. The only thing that kept them together was the fact that they were designed by famous designers. But uh, for me, you know, ThinkPad, and I wanted to, I wanted to build that relationship to really create this, this, uh, this connection, so that it was uh, kind of an offense and a defense, mm -hmm. so that you, know, you can stop the crazy people from trying to change the design of ThinkPad, <laughs> you know, and you can build recognition for it that goes well beyond that of a, of a logo or just a brand name. I know that you have a, a bit of history trying to um, caretake those brandings, especially during the transition period between IBM to Lenovo. Yeah, that, um, you know, that all kind of started in 2005. And it was this you know, company that we, I'd never heard of, you know, Lenovo. I didn't know what that was or people pronouncing it different way, like Lenovo or Lenovo or nobody, or Inovo or, or all these strange pronunciations that people were trying to make. And, and uh, you know, it was, it was a kind of a weird thing. There were always rumors about IBM trying to get out of the PC business. And, you know, you never really knew was anything gonna happen. And I wasn't in the, in the uh, you know, the inner circle that knew exactly what was going on, but there were certainly, you know, rumors and, and, and such. But when it happened, you know, all of a sudden there were a lot of branding questions, you know, mm. like uh, what were we going to, what's, uh, what's the name of the company we're working for and what happens with ThinkPad? And, you know, oddly enough, we were in a, we were in a meeting with some people from IBM corporate branding and they had uh, mapped out this kind of crazy presentation that they showed uh, where they used uh, code names for IBM and Lenovo. And they were uh, Island and, and Lenai. <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous secret code names. It was, a, it was a humorous presentation, if anything, because it was so confusing at the, the, uh, the code names they selected. Anyway, they they presented this whole thing as kind of a fait accompli. Like, uh, well, this is easy. All you gotta do is scrape off IBM and write Lenovo on there and you're done. I'm, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I, I, don't think I'm, I don't think I'm there yet. What, why would we wanna do that? Because uh, what, you, what we just sold really is ThinkPad. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't sell them so much IBM ThinkPad, although there was a, there was an agreement and a relationship to use the IBM branding for a certain period of time. But what we really had sold Lenovo was the ThinkPad brand. And my feeling was, why would you want to suppress that uh, and create all this confusion about, well, who's Le Lenovo? What is that? Because, I mean, IBM was literally suggesting that we remove the ThinkPad brand from the outside of the machine and replace it with Lenovo. I'm like, Wow, I mean, that's like you know, Tata buying Jaguar and probably the Jaguar put in the car. I, I mean, that just sounds insane to me. So I was in the meeting and I, you know, I asked the question. I said, "So who owns ThinkPad from a brand perspective?" And the answer I got from IBM corporate branding and, and such was, "Well, you do." I said, "Well, then why are we talking to you about it? I, I don't understand." You know, is, is it written down somewhere that you guys get to do our branding? And the, and the question that immediately got back was, well, what else would you do? And I said, well, I don't know if I'd put Lenovo on it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of companies that have brands that either they have built themselves or they acquired, and they chose to suppress the actual, you know, master brand. Yeah. I mean, the Jaguar one is one for sure. I mean, uh, Volkswagen certainly didn't take the Porsche brand off the Porsche cars and start selling them. And if they did, they ought to have their head examined. You know, it's just like, you know, I, I couldn't believe I was having the, these conversations. And then, you know, in the room, there were some other Lenovo executives. They're going, like, yeah, yeah, he's right. Why, why are we listening to this? And, and you know, so we made um, studies 
graphic kind of studies and some design models showing how we could do the branding and increasing the size of the ThinkPad mark, you know, turning it into an actual logo, making the dot red, ultimately illuminating it, uh, still retaining the, the font, which was originally created by Paul Rand uh, to be locked up with the three colored IBM logo. Uh, you know, I studied in fact how to maybe retain some of the colors, but maybe it seemed like it was a little too copycatty. Uh, so we didn't do that, although we certainly talked about it. But you know, eventually through this experimentation, everybody sort of agreed, well, that's that seems like it's the right strategy. <clears throat> but um, initially we had an agreement where we were going to use the IBM brand for a while. And that was intended to, you know, kind of help infuse uh, stability in this acquisition and you know, not scare people away from buying ThinkPads because they weren't made by IBM anymore. And you know, so it was a big campaign, if you will, to you know, tell the world that they're still designed by the same people, it's still the same engineering, it's still the same factories, it's just got a different owner. Uh, you know, but the, the branding was certainly a part of that. And uh, so that was kind of what we, we started to do. And then uh, the, uh, the chief marketing officer at the time felt like we didn't really need to run out the clock on this relationship with uh, with uh, retaining the IBM brand on the product. It was just like sort of delay the inevitable because it didn't take long before people were starting to figure out like, all oh, these things are made by this other company now. Why does it say IBM on it? That was kind of strange. So there was a decision made to remove the IBM and great idea, but it was gonna cost a fortune in tooling because the recess was molded into the the top cover and also on the palm rest for a, a logo plate that, that had the IBM logo as well as the ThinkPad brand. Uh, they were kind of locked up in a slight angle to each other and, and such. And so that was a big problem. And I, I don't remember the exact estimate, but it was gonna cost a lot of time in retooling these parts. And it was gonna cost millions of dollars. Uh, so I came up with this idea that we could introduce a plate that had big ThinkPad and we would fill the former ThinkPad area, which is the series designation and kind of a shiny black on matte black. And it worked great. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great way to sort of transition. Uh, and it didn't look like it was just a mistake or you know peeled off this other logo and stuck this one on instead. And it saved a lot of money. And so that's, you know, that's why you'll see some of these early uh, ThinkPads that are branded in that way, because it was a, it was really kind of a transition. So I was there were there were tumultuous times because there were many many there were many different opinions you know on this on this topic. But uh, fortunately, I think the uh, you know, we made the right decision, and we we really made the ThinkPad brand even more prominent, and we used. The ThinkPad brand to build the Lenovo brand, and you know, of course, we had the Lenovo logo on the product. It was on the information plate. And we also put it on the uh, by the display on the inside of the product, and then it's moved around here and there. I noticed the latest one is back on the on the uh, top cover. I don't know. It seems to be some topic of discussion ongoing, but. but uh, at least we didn't just peel it off and put a giant Lenovo on it. That would have been so crazy. Why would you even buy the brand if you're not going to use it? <laughs> Seems silly. So true. Yes. But, um, you know, this, this relationship that ThinkPad enjoys between brand and design, I think it's just, I think it's the envy of the industry. Um, you know, it's it's almost 30 years old. I mean, Apple doesn't have this. You go back 30 years ago and look at what an Apple laptop looked like, they were laughable. <laughs> it's like, okay. They don't look anything like what they look like today. Not at all. And the ThinkPad, you can go get the original ThinkPad. You can one today and you say, okay, that's from the same, kind of from the same guy. <laughs> it looks like the same person did this. Somehow, you know, it's from the the same thought process, the same core DNA. Okay, it's, you know, it's uh, 20 millimeters thin now instead of 70. 
but it has the same feel and ethos to it. So to me, what the ThinkPad brand has meaning, and it's uh, the meaning is that it's uh, it's has it's rooted in functionality. It's like the thinking man's computer. It's not frivolous. It's not you know the uh, the latest fashion or the you know, dipping its toe somehow in in some fad or fleeting idea. It's uh, it's uh, purposeful. It, it's it's like a it's you know it's like military stuff. Yeah, I mean, military stuff doesn't go in and out of style, although it's very stylish. You know, you know, people people wear clothing all the time that is inspired by military gear, or people drive vehicles. So the Jeep is a perfect example of of these, or the Defender, yeah. the, another one. Although I don't like the new one so much, it's a little too marshmallow for me. Uh, but you know, it's um, it's it's rooted in that and. And so ThinkPad is this, is this union between form and function. And it's not, it's not heavy on one or the other. Hopefully the best relationship is one where it's synergistic. And that doesn't come by, you know, just happen by itself. It, it requires a lot of, um, a lot of curation uh, to do that. And you have to have a mindset where you say, well, wait a minute now, that, I think we're tilting the balance a little bit too much towards you know, the style, if you will, and that's dangerous. Or, well, we're tilting it a little bit too much towards function. It, it looks, it's a little too, uh, it's a little too obvious. It needs to be a little bit more sophisticated in terms of its design. Maybe we shouldn't, you know, maybe, okay, maybe that screw has to be there, but it doesn't look right there. Can't we just get rid of it somehow? If I can't move it over three millimeters, can we get rid of it? Because it looks like a mistake. Mm -hmm. you know, so these are the kinds of things that you, know, you can play with to try to improve the, the overall uh, union or, uh, or uh, synergy between these, these ideas. And a lot of designers, I don't think, understand that. They, they look at something and they think like everything has to be beautiful in, in like a, one of my favorite examples is a sports car. Everybody thinks that, you know, you have to make it well, like a sports car. Well, wait, you know, a sports car has a very specific purpose. It doesn't mean that a, a Humvee is a bad design. <laughs> it's, it's just as good a design as a Ferrari, but it has a different purpose. So, you know, this relationship between form, function, and purpose uh, is extraordinarily important. And that's where uh, I always try to to create that that balance and that that sort of tipping point, find the tipping point between these two ideas, and be careful that you don't go a little too much that way because it's kind of hard to get back. 